Test swing, one, two, three. Here we go. Amazing fantasy. Sounds like a fairy tale. Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. You can join me today to unbox this action figure of Spider-Boy. Oh no, it's the action figure of the first appearance of Spider-Man when he was a young teenager. But before we do the unboxing, let me compare this box with my other action figures in their respective boxes. I just want to give those collectors who never opened their boxes an idea how the box size differ with other toy lines. Here's the retro style packaging of Marvel's Spiral and Dark Phoenix. Here's Medicom Mapex Classic Spider-Man number 185 and Superman of the Batman Hush storyline. This is Medicom Mapex Hush Batman and DC Collectibles Nightball Catwoman. SH Pigworts Dragon Ball Superhero Goku and Max Factory Figma Kazumi. This is G.I. Joe Classified Series Sergeant Slaughter and Mattel's Brett the Hitman Heart, Marvel Legends Doctor Strange, and Modular Iron Man. Sad to say, we shall never see this plastic window packaging ever again. G.I. Joe Classified Series Spirit Iron Knife and Storm Shadow. Same thing with Marvel Legends, we shall never see this plastic window packaging ever again. Here's the Renew Your Bows 2 pack, Retro Card Spider-Man, and Haslab Galactus. I just don't know how to fit this massive box into the screen. Here's the front of the box. This is what it shows on one of its side. On the other side, they are showing the art on the cover of the first appearance of Spider-Man in the comic book Amazing Fantasy. That sounds like a sexual fairy tale. Here's what it shows at the back of the box. Wow, finally they gave him a complete set of accessories. No wonder his retail price is more than Iron Spider, Spider Noir, and Future Foundation Spider-Man. Let's look at the top of the box. It's showing the logo of Spider-Man 60 Amazing Years. While at the bottom, the plastic pre-packaging sticker was not yet here and some text telling you the contents of this box. Okay, let's start unboxing. I got this last year together with the other Spider-Man figures like Renew Your Bows 2 Pack, Iron Spider, Spider Noir, and Future Foundation. However, I wasn't able to do the unboxing video. Obviously, I lost my enthusiasm due to the negative publicity surrounding the packaging when they paste away. Oh, There's another tape at the bottom. Let's remove this first. Too much negative publicity surrounding the packaging when they paste out the previous packaging with plastic window. It became the main reason for bad quality of the figures released in the market. Okay, here are the contents of the box. Oh, where are the accessories? Oh man, I think the accessories are missing. It's not here inside. Where is it? Wait. Oh, oh, it's here at the back. Yeah, I think, yes. Here it is. Here are the accessories. If the accessories are really missing, I'm gonna regret opening this box. I, I really hate, I, I don't have a good feeling about opening this box, really. I think this is the Spider-Man webline accessory. Let's check this first. I can't remember which one, but there was a previous Spider-Man figure that came together with this webline accessory, so this is not new. It's okay they added this. Let's check it later if Spider-Man can swing using this webline. Now let's check the other accessories. I believe this is a complete set of hands for Spider-Man. Hopefully this is complete and the parts are correct. I don't wanna see both left hand or both right hand. Okay, here are his open hands or wall crawling hands. Here's the pair of gripping hands so he can grip on the web line. Here's the left whipping hand and the right closed fist. His first appearance costume, he's got webs under his arms. Here is one of the web effects that you can attach under his arms. Here's the second set of web effects that you can attach under his arms. Now let's remove Spider-Man from this paper wrapper. On my other videos, I used to call this first appearance Spider-Man Midget Spider-Man because he's small. Of course, this is a teenage version of Spider-Man who according to Marvel Comics database is 5'8 
5 feet 10 inches tall. I don't know if that is the same height when he became an adult, but on one of the panel of Spider-Man comics, he mentioned he is a 6 feet tall spider. That makes the renewable Spider-Man somewhat acceptable in height since he's supposed to be taller than this version. Okay, let's check the paint application on this figure. Oh, he looks nice. This is great. The white and black paint on the eyes looks great. The web lines on the head, neck, front body, and both arms look really nice. The web lines are aligned properly. The spider logo is almost the exact copy of the art from the comics when he first appeared in the Amazing Fantasy Comics issue number 15. The web lines on his boots looks really nice, although he doesn't have to articulation. No missing web lines on the arms. They have given him pinless elbows which is nice. Nice painted logo at the back. The matte black or lighter black paint they use on this figure look awesome. Or is this the base color of the plastic they used? Overall, the paint applied on this figure is truly awesome. I must admit, the paint here is way better than they did with the renewable Spider-Man. And his overall body shape or anatomy looks better. Okay, next, let's check if he's got better articulation too compared to other Marvel Legends Spider-Man figures. As usual, I'll be starting from head to toe. Let's check the head first. The head, I think it can tilt left and right. Yes, it can tilt. Okay, this is a nice range. It can rotate, of course can rotate 360 degrees let's check the maximum range his head can look up let's see i think this is yes this is the maximum range his head can look up it looks really nice this is what he looks like from all angles doesn't look bad and like some figures when looking up they look bad let's try his head looking down i think this is the maximum range his head can look down his chin already touching his upper torso in some angles, it looks okay, but on this angle, it looks bad. Anyway, the range is better when they use the hinge type joint at the neck. Now, let's go over to the articulation of the arms. Let's check the left arm. His arm can rotate 360 degrees with no problem. The shoulder hinge seem to be okay. You can raise his arm like this. Oh, there seem to be a visible scratch on his bicep. I didn't notice that when I was checking earlier. His bicep swivel is working fine. Oh wait, it's the hole under his bicep. It's a good thing the hole is on the black part of the costume so it's not noticeable. They gave him double finless elbows which we all know this is going to have a nice range when bending his elbows. Let's check the articulation on his hand. I think there's a wrist joint which can make his hand do a pull rotation and there's also a hinge. Next, let's check the articulation on his upper body. He's got a diaphragm cut which can make his body rotate 360 degrees but it cannot bend upwards and also i think it's difficult to bend downwards i guess i can say the upper body articulation of the renewable spider-man is better than this figure although this figure has the same hinge type waist articulation with the renewable spider-man too bad his upper body articulation is quite limited or maybe i need to force it but no I don't want to scratch the paint. Let's check the waist articulation. This one is quite stiff. I think I should hit this first. Oh, you can hear the ratchet sound. So this is the maximum range his waist can make him bend up and bend down. No waist rotation. But at least he can do this. Next, let's check if this figure can do a split. Okay, he can do a split. It's a nice range. This is the maximum range his legs can separate from each other. There's no drop down hips, but his uh, thigh swivel is working fine. He's got a pinless knee joint, which is working great. The back of his foot can touch his butt. They also have given him a shin swivel or a boot cut, which is great. A hinge type ankle joint and his foot can pivot. Also, I forgot to mention earlier that they gave him a butterfly joint which I didn't show it to you but I'm going to show it to you right now. It's working but it's quite a bit stiff so I'm going to need to hit this first. All the articulation of Marvel Legends Spider-Man figures here so it's fine. Now I'm going to show you the accessories that came with him. These are his default hands that were already attached when you unbox a right sweeping hand and a left closed fist. And this is the other pair which is the right fist and the left 
whipping hand. Here's the open hands or wall crawling hands and the first set of web effects. Here's the gripping hands, the other set of web effects under his arms and the web line which we can use his gripping hand. Let's try make him swing. Okay, here we go. That was awesome. Try to watch it again. Next, let me compare this figure with my other action figures in 6 inch scale. As you can clearly see, he is quite small. Definitely this height is when he was a teenager when he first appeared in the comics. So we can say probably he grow 2 to 4 inch, we don't know. But like I mentioned earlier, there was a panel in the comics in which he mentioned he is a 6 feet tall spider. Earlier, I have doubts on opening the box and creating this video. All I can say now is I'm really recommending you to get this figure if you're a Spider-Man collector or a casual toy collector. Despite some minor flaws on the upper body articulation, this figure looks awesome. It's a great representation of the teenager Spider-Man. Unfortunately, I no longer have the first appearance Spider-Man done by Toy Biz many years ago. That's why I couldn't make a comparison. Anyway, I'm happy this unboxing turned out great okay we're done unboxing if you like this content give it a thumbs up if not give it a thumbs down thank you for watching see you on my next video